Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the sum of a bunch of complex numbers or should I say imaginary numbers. We have 1 plus 1 over i plus 1 over i squared plus 1 over i cubed so on and so forth all the way up to and including 1 over i to the power 20 and we're going to be evaluating the sum. This is a finite sum. If we had an infinite sum with powers of i what would happen? Could we find it? Would it converge? Or would it be indeterminate or some type of infinity or undefined, whatever you want to call that. Okay, there's a lot of names. Anyways, so to be able to find the sum, I'm going to be presenting more than one method. And the first method looks as follows. I'm going to actually make, for my first method, I'm going to make a common denominator because why not? Okay, the common denominator would be i to the power 20. So if I start with 1 over 1, I'm supposed to multiply this by i to the power 20, and then the next one by i to the 19th, and then i to the 18th, all the way down to 1, and all of that is divided by i to the power 20. Now, i to the power 20 is actually kind of easy to deal with because, as you hopefully know, i to the fourth power is 1, and therefore, if you have anything like i to the power 4k, it's equal to 1 as long as k is an integer. Now, what happens if k is negative? It still works because if you raise 1 to a negative power, negative integer power, then you're good to go. So, i to the power 20 is 1. We don't have to worry about it. It's all good. What about the top? Well, the top we can evaluate, again, in so many different ways. You can start with i to the power 20 being 1, and then i to the power 19 is just going to be if you think about it, it's i to the power 16 times i to the power 3. So it's the same as i to the third, which is negative i. And then i to the 18th is going to be the same as i to the second, which is negative 1. And then i to the 17 is just going to be i because it leaves a remainder of 1 upon division by 4. Make sense? So basically, the group of 4 is always going to cancel out. We do have how many terms? 21 terms. That means we're going to have a leftover. And where is that going to be? one of the endpoints. It doesn't matter which one, but in this case, I can go with one because it's easier. Therefore, this whole sum is going to equal one over one or just one. Make sense? Okay, cool. That is the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at another way to approach this problem. We have one plus one over i plus one over i squared all the way up to one over i to the power 20. We could also look at it as a geometric series, a finite geometric series, right? And the common ratio is going to be basically 1 over i because every time you multiply by 1 over i, so r is 1 over i and the first term is 1. And the formula for the finite sum is equal to what? Do you remember the formula? a sub 1 times 1 minus a, I mean, 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r, right? This is basically the sum of the first n terms. Suppose that we start with a sub 1 and we end with a sub 1 times r to the power n minus 1. So when we have n terms, this is the sum, right? And we do have n terms, n being 21, right? Okay, because we do have 21 terms. So in this sum, then we're going to have the following. Our a sub 1 is 1. 1 minus r, r is 1 over i, and we're going to raise it to the power 21, and then it's going to be divided by 1 minus 1 over i. That kind of looks like a complicated expression, but guess what? We can easily evaluate it. First of all, what, have, what is 1 over i to the power 21? We can kind of think of it as 1 over i to the 20 times 1 over i, and 1 over i to the 20, as you know, is 1 because 1 over 1. And so it's going to be 1 minus 1 over i minus divided by 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1 over i, so this is 1 as well, so the sum is going to be 1 again, right? Makes sense? Okay, and we still have another way to look at it. For example, you can kind of take this and look at 1. 1 is 1. 1 over i is going to be negative i, and then 1 over i squared is going to be negative 1, and 1 over i cubed is just going to be positive i. Again, we're getting a sum of 0 from four consecutive terms. That pretty much all the time happens if you're not skipping powers. And we're going to end up with one of the terms at the end. And again, it's going to be 1. Is there another way to do it? Probably, but let's stop here. 
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.